Hey everyone, my name is Sean Hodgins, and I am a maker. I have my own YouTube channel, which you can find in the link below, where I make all sorts of cool open source projects that involve custom circuit boards, robotics, mechanical systems, you name it. So this week's going to be a little bit different than the videos on my channel. I'm going to be doing a detailed process on designing your own Arduino-based robot. But not just any robot. This robot's going to run on a neural network. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to go through the design steps of prototyping, making the circuit board and the schematics, ordering it and then assembling it, and then finally we'll program it. You'll see all the steps and hopefully you'll be able to make your own at the end. So with that said, let's gather up some components and let's get started. Okay, so these are the basic components we need to get the robot kind of tested beforehand, before we start making any schematics. You want to make sure that the pinouts are going to work, you know, even though you can read the documentation, you just want to make sure that everything's going to work before you start making the circuit board. So we've got uh, an Arduino, this is actually um, a Sam D21 spark fun board. This is the microcontroller that I like to use. These are some uh, photoresistors for detecting the light. Two motors, we'll probably only have to test one. This is a motor driver, uh, it's the DRV8835 I believe. This is a little board from Palulu. Of course a battery, wheels, and I may put an OLED screen on it. So it will display some information when the robot is doing things. So I'm going to connect all this stuff to a breadboard and then we can kind of test it out before, you know, we make any schematics. And when we're making the schematics, we can refer to this, and we can also change some pins if it makes it easier to connect them. You'll see later on when we're working on it. Okay, now that I have all the jumpers connected to the Arduino and to the components, I just need to write a quick Arduino program and test out everything and make sure that it all works. So writing programs like this can be really helpful for later on. You can define all your pinouts and you can test them out and you can save all those for when you're designing the program later on. You can just copy and paste them over. It's especially helpful if you're working with motors because sometimes microcontrollers, especially using um, like Arduino, you could have pins that behave weirdly in certain situations like when you plug it in and you don't want the motors to spin when you first plug it in. You only want them to react when the program tells them to. So this is a time when you can test all that. So I wrote a simple program that uh, just tests all the photo cells and the motor driver and then it also displays it to the OLED display. So each one of the photo cells outputs how much light they're seeing on the OLED screen and then the motor is controlled by this one here and it will speed up and slow down depending on how much light we have. So now I can see that everything works. I can go on and I can transfer this physical schematic into an actual one in KiCad and I'll show you how to do that. So the nice thing about using you know that module like the motor driver from Palulu and the SparkFun board is that they have their schematics available. That means you can integrate them into your own, even though Palulu's is just a PDF and SparkFun is in Eagle, not KiCad, you can still use them to reference and you can use them to create your own schematics. And you don't have to go digging through the documentation for, say, that motor driver just to see how it needs to be set up because you can kind of copy what others have done already and you know that it works and you've also tested it. That's the point of these boards and Arduinos and everything is that you can test your designs before you make your own custom circuit board. So now that the schematics are done and we're about to begin designing the actual PCB and the traces and doing all that stuff, I like to design the board 
in some CAD software first and lay out some of the things like the motors, where the screen's gonna be, where the buttons are gonna be, and the actual outline of the circuit board. The reason for this is it makes it a lot easier to import the board outline into KiCad if you have a DXF file of it already. And a lot of CAD software, most CAD software, allows you to export DXFs. Now when you first open up KiCad to start the PCB design process, I import the DXF file and then from there I then import all the components which when you first open it, it's going to be a big mess of wires. So the first thing I like to do is separate the components into the groups of things they're connected to. So the capacitors that are connected to the microcontroller or the group of things that in, is involved with charging the battery or the photoresistors with their resistor. I like to separate them all so that they're isolated so that you can kind of create smaller type packages of components before you actually place them on the board. You'll probably have to move them around but this is the way I do it just to start off. Once I have pretty much all the components on the board then I will start to route the components that are the most sensitive uh, and require the direct line of communication. So say the OLED display, um, you know, the clock line or something like that, you don't want interference on those because it could mess with it. It's really unlikely and you could probably just route them however you want, but that's just the way I do it. It just gives myself a starting point. So, and generally the last thing I do is the power lines. If you take your time, work away at it, and slowly you get everything on. We'll be good to set all the traces and then we'll be able to send this board design off to some PCB manufacturing place and we'll go from there. Alright, so the design is done. That's step one to this whole thing. So I'm going to send this off to a PCB manufacturer and we should get it back in maybe a week or so and we'll continue on. So one of the things I like to do after I finish it is load it up, which KiCad has a mode called 3D Viewer, which lets you view the PCB in 3D. And this lets me know if some components are going to be weird to install or things are going to bump into each other. Just gives you another viewpoint of what the board could look like when it's finished. It's really helpful. So with that, that's part one down. We'll get these boards, we'll get the components, put it all together, and we'll have our assembled robot next video. So stay tuned, subscribe, check out my channel. You Maybe you'll see some things you like there. And yeah, everyone, be good and have a good night. <laughs>